നമ്മുടെ ക്ഷണം സ്വീകരിച്ച് ഈ പരിപാടി എത്തിച്ചേർന്ന ശ്രീ ജിജിമോൻ സാറിനെ സംസാരിക്കാനായി ഈ സെക്ഷനിലേക്ക് ക്ഷണിക്കുന്നു thank you krishnan sir thank you devi thank you very much for that uh, uh, wonderful introduction I even i would say one of the best i ever heard about me uh, thank you so much for that introduction and uh, yeah thank you ab tell us for giving uh, introducing me to this college uh, uh, and i i very much appreciate uh, this initiative uh, i mean uh the initiative which you have taken uh, to create more entrepreneurs which is definitely uh, i would say the need uh, of our state or our country and all uh, to as part of our as we are growing to the as we are uh, trying to become a developed nation it is definitely very important to create as many as entrepreneurs good morning to all of you i see 100 plus uh, members uh and i will i will talk a little bit about me and then i would like to hear your questions i would like to take it i would like to make this session as much as interactive as possible so i believe there are people listening to this session who who are actually dreaming about becoming an, an entrepreneur in the future uh so those who really want to perceive your entrepreneur career probably i may be able to share my experience and maybe you might be able to pick something and if you get inspired i'm really uh, really thankful for that yeah uh yeah my journey starts from from a small village uh, in in trishur district i'm originally from trishur district um i i did my schooling in in the in the, in the nearby schools and and uh yeah as as every every one of you i also had a very interesting childhood and uh, i would say in those days my grandfather was my role model because he was one of the man who was actually respected by uh, by the nearby community nearby teams because he was one of the man of perfection he was one of, one of the man of uh, strong values maybe in my childhood days with him probably helped me to pick some of the good va- value system from the from my grandfather that's how i started my journey uh, from this small village and maybe in the early days uh, in the childhood days i uh, we had a small wall radio at home my home i was always amused uh, to see amazed to see the the electronics uh, parts in the in the in the uh, wall radio the glowing walls in the in the radio and all whenever it it stopped working i opened the radio and tried to repair it probably seeing this my parents assumed yeah this guy has got a passion for electronics they decided to send me to a technical high school uh, which is in technical high school thrissur where i started i'm um, where i did my high schooling those who have attended technical high school uh, knows uh, yes they teach some some technical subjects in the in the school days along with the normal subjects so i picked electronics so i found it really interesting i mean the, the uh, even even in the from the 9th uh, standard itself you specialize in electronics you assemble certain uh, circuits you pr- make some products that's how i started i would say my first entrepreneurial journey while i was studying in the school itself i got an opportunity to learn electronics make some products based on the electronics so uh, i i had a, a friends who are not attending the electronics uh, or a technical high school so i i used to make some products for them sell to them make some money get some money i would say getting the exact bomb cost i mean bill of material cost from this from these friends which which is which may be considered as my first attempt to do the business it was not at all a business at that moment but uh, 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 it did help me to earn some money which i reinvested in in learning reinvested in learning means i started buying advanced books which on electronics for you and all continued my you know my uh, perceiving into deeper into the electronics and completed schooling and uh, seeing 
and those days the computer science was picking uh, computer science was one of the hot topics so one of my uh, cousin recommended computer science uh, for for my engineering and i did my engineering in computer science and found a really good uh, blend between electronics and programming because i was so passionate about electronics from the childhood and i when i got an opportunity to work in uh, our when i got an opportunity to program these electronic components uh, i i am sure many of you might have already learned programming by now so you might have learned c programming or c++ programming or basic or something so yeah those days we started with the assembly language programming which is actually a bit of bit cryptic programming language which is directly controlling the microprocessor or the electronics which gives you a kick off like uh, or the real uh, real i would say uh, the um, real uh, i mean you you work very closely with the electronics through the computer programs and the pro- the, the software uh, whatever you write or the programs work Uh, as per your instructions which really excites you so that's how i started my uh, learning and i found it really interesting and then uh, soon after completing uh, completing my uh, engineering study i uh, jumped into our I, i ventured into start my own uh, company at that time uh, it is not mentioned anywhere probably Uh, Krishan sir, I could not pick it from my LinkedIn profile because it is not mentioned in the LinkedIn profile. So soon after completing my uh, the courses, I did uh, I started my own company. Uh, maybe we can we can call it as a startup those days. But uh, I'm talking about uh, early 2000 or early 1999, 1999 exactly. So those days, uh, the startup keyword was not. so popular or no one talked about startup even though apple was considered as one of the successful startup at those times but no one knew about it because we did not had access to fr- this free internet we did not i mean internet was so expensive even the computing power was very less you did not had the mobile phones at those days so you had yeah if you go to the college you get you get access to the computer but you never get access to the internet Th- those were the days but uh, everybody talked about the future of computers and the future of or the excellent opportunities in this space and uh, in my town i am talking about uh, thrissur town uh, many of the small and medium or i would say small shops uh, or even medium sized shops or they were thinking about computerization and i got an opportunity to write software for them which was earning a lot of money i'm talking about my early 20s getting uh, 15000 20000 uh, roughly per every installation of the software was a very exciting opportunity those days my uh, pa were have had started uh, working in some companies they were earning very less so i thought this is my future this is exactly a, i'm going to really get a excellent opportunity by making software for all those companies yeah i did it for around 2 uh, years did a uh, lot of software installations in the town uh, was one of the leading software supplier uh, to to even uh, a company is called malabar building products limited uh, who was actually specializing in corrugated sheet manufacturing in uh, kerala i mean their factory was in trishur and they had all over south india they had factories and i was responsible for uh, computerization of their inventory systems and combining it with the financial accounting systems that was one of i would say that was one of the largest project i took up those days i did it very successfully and uh, early 2000s i started hearing stories from technopark where my friends started working in uh, international companies I like uh, Hitachi. I mean, the Technopark suddenly opened up a, a, a huge opportunity for the computer programmers or software engineers. So uh, they they started uh, talking about their experiences in Hitachi, their experiences in uh, U.S. companies and all, which they, which actually uh, which actually uh, made me to think twice uh, whether I should continue in my domestic business or. whether i should get exposure to the international business so with the limited access to the internet with the limited access to the total ecosystem 
the only way to get into this international business was working in a company. Then I decided to slowly shut down my business uh, to uh, to work in a corporate company, and I joined a company in Technopark. Uh, soon after, uh, I mean, I came from Trishur to Truantrum, joined a company in uh, Truantrum, and then then immediately after that, I got an opportunity to work in J- a Japanese company. That's what uh, Prashant Sar was mentioning. I was deputed to Hitachi Corporation. So the journey from Trishur to Truandrum then moved to Tokyo, which completely changed my uh, my career, which completely changed my perception about uh, the products, the, my perception about the customer care, my perception about the quality. Uh, I'm sure many of you might have heard about uh, the, the quality of uh, products coming out of Japan and uh, uh, made in Japan uh, though where the, the 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 de facto standard of highest quality product at that at that time. So I landed in Japan in the in the uh, mid of uh, yeah I mean towards the end of year 2000. Worked in Hitachi for three years and then moved to Mitsubishi. So I I got what I learned from that uh, country is that the 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 uh, the extreme extreme uh, perseverance or extreme. Uh, I mean, uh, you you might heard about probably the Japanese work extremely uh, in a stretched hours, and they make the highest quality products. So the quality culture is one I picked from there, and uh, and I was also surprised uh, to see the the punctuality of this meeting happening. I mean, even Krishan Sir was uh, following up uh, me uh, to join to uh, because he was talking about we should start the meeting sharp at 11. I was so surprised because I haven't seen that in, in India much. But in Japan, yes, this is the culture. Uh, I mean, you might have heard about the bullet trains, uh, bullet trains uh, traveling at the, at the speed of 400 kilometers per hour, which has an accuracy of 99.99% from when it comes to the timing perspective. That is the accuracy of uh, their entire systems. I mean, a meeting starts at 11 means all the members should be, must be available by 10.57. If you are coming at 11, you are actually late. That is the culture. So this is what I picked from Japan. I mean, the quality culture, extreme importance giving to the quality culture and then the customer care. The word, I mean, during these five years, I also had to pick uh, Japanese language uh, because uh, to, I was actually, I mean, Hitachi, the factories of Hitachi were in the remote part of, not exactly in Tokyo, but it was actually even 200 kilometers away from Tokyo and those regions, no one talks uh, English language. So you had to actually, if you want to really survive, you must pick their language. Picking their language helps you to even pick their culture as well. So I picked the language. Uh, the word for customer is Okiaksama. And the, the exact word for God is also Okiaksama. So that's the, that's the level of uh, importance they give for customer. So I'm talking about the extreme highest quality, extreme transparency they maintain, and uh, the respect they give to the customers. So yeah, I, I talked about some of the value systems I picked from my grandfather and I, uh, I learned the, some of the uh, business culture from uh, Tokyo. Uh, so I, I mean, I started my career. I mean, started my entrepreneurship soon after the college, and I, I had to actually sell it off uh, for 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 my, uh, for achieving my dream of getting into the international business. And so whenever I worked in Japan and whenever I worked for international customers, the, my dream was to set up a company. Always set up a company which is working in the in the, in the international space. Uh, even delivering the world-class products, world-class quality products. So, uh, fortunate, I was fortunate enough to try out, uh, do a lot of experiments wherever I worked. And I, I, I mean, even though I am a hardcore engineer, I uh, started looking into the, uh, looking into the avenues to do the sales, to increase the business uh, f- for the company I was working for, uh, and then. And, uh, uh, Slowly built a strong network uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the international business uh, side. So soon after Hitachi, I got an opportunity to work in a Mitsubishi Electric Corporation. 
uh, from 2007. I worked um, uh, for Mitsubishi Electric Corporation's uh, India team. I was heading there in India Delivery Center for till 2014. So this particular company was making products for the world's best car makers. I mean, when 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 we talk about the best car makers, some of the brands come to your mind. I mean, Mercedes Benz or BMW or uh, Volvo or or those kind of cars. So I got an opportunity to work for all these companies through these Japanese Mitsubishi Electric Corporations. We call it as Melco. This is how I got into the automotive. The, I got into the automotive software, and I I. Uh, being a hardcore electronics uh, passion and a passionate guy, getting into an opportunity to work in automotive electronics was uh, one of the best things I could uh, get. And I, I found it, okay, this is going to be extremely uh, interesting. And this, uh, we, we even even in the a few years, I could see the progress uh, very much in the electronics. Then I decided, okay, if I am starting a company, it should be for automotive electronics. It should be for automotive software. So in the year 2014, we started in a, a very small way. I mean, by the time I came back to True Antrim, started working from India, uh, started looking at all the startups, uh, how they built the company, how they established uh, the companies. So my the, uh, the whole intention was to create products which impacts the world, which impacts the uh, or which helps the society. This was my goal. But uh, sitting in Truantrum in a small uh, place, I realized that creating products, world-class products is still not easy. So then uh, that's how I started into the product engineering services. So, so Axia, you know, as a company, we established as a company which is actually providing software engineering services, product engineering services for the world's best car makers. It took almost uh, three years. Uh, I mean, we started with a very small team. Now, let me come to uh, let me come to the core topic, the the real entrepreneurship journey, which I started uh, with Axia Technologies. Uh, yeah, we started very small. We started out of, uh, near in a, in a small ho house uh, outside Techno Park uh, in a bedroom. Uh, I started with uh, four members, total six members. Uh, it took. It took around three to six months, roughly six months to get the first customer. And at that time it was not from the automotive, but we found it very interesting because it was for a cloud. It was built to build a cloud platform. Uh, many of you might have heard about something product called Slack. This was something similar to Slack. Uh, it's a cloud-based uh, communication channel. So we uh, started building the product. We started getting the revenues, and uh, soon after getting the revenues, we started more. I mean, we moved to Technopark. We established our office within Technopark. Started hiring engineers, and started growing. Uh, by uh, by 2015, we are around 25 to 30 member team with a lot of senior members who have been working with us in in, in, in Mitsubishi and all. Uh, we are a full grown company. We have uh, achieved uh, really good, uh, I mean, established various departments like small HR and all. Then comes the biggest problem. Our our major customer at that particular point uh, gone bankrupt. And this was a company from Canada who was actually building a huge product. We have been investing a lot of money, our own money to build that product. And suddenly the customer uh, went missing or her customer uh, started not responding. That's where the biggest crisis we were. Uh, hit, I mean, we were hit by this crisis, and uh, uh, it took almost one year for us uh, to uh, to come uh, to do uh, come out of this crisis period. But the good thing is, uh, uh, the, the team stood up with us. I mean, the team supported. Uh, with their support, we started uh, perceiving our original dream of looking into the automotive embedded software. So. We, we knocked all the doors and uh, I mean, by the time we also had established an office in Japan, we had invested a considerable amount of money in Japan to because I had a lot of connections in Japan. Unfortunately, it didn't work out those days, but now we have a, a business from, coming from Japan. But uh, since Japan was not working out, we started, we started our focus or shifted our focus to Germany 
and uh, um, and one of the partnerships discussions went very well and we started working with this particular german company uh, who also co-invested in the in the sales activities we got the first project in the early 2016 uh, which was for the world's best car maker stuttgart based car maker i mean you are familiar it was for mrs benz so we uh, uh, the, the evaluation was really tough uh, because this it was a multi level evaluations i mean the german teams had to actually come down and evaluate entire team's capability to take up this project uh, the company financials were not good but uh, some i mean by that time one investor came in and supported us one investor from germany came in and supported and uh, with his support we could actually we could succeed in the, in the supplier evaluations and we started the project yeah i i would say yeah that is the second phase of uh, axia technologies we uh, did that particular project in the extremely good way uh, along with that we also started working for another north american uh, client uh, north american customer uh, ford uh, we started working in these two projects and both of these projects uh, with the excellent work we did both of these projects expanded further and uh, the team grown to from 50 to 100 and 150 now uh, when we look at at this particular point uh, we are ne- nearly 300 member team that is the journey we have uh, achieved uh, that the journey so far and now we are looking forward uh, to growing uh, multi- uh, i mean further uh, we i mean with the good work we have done in the in the previous projects whichever we t- took up irrespective of the challenges in the projects we delivered at the world's best quality so some of uh, my learnings or the team's learnings from the japanese culture quality culture and uh, international product culture really helped uh, to uh, support our customers or gain confidence from the new customers as well so now we are looking forward uh, to to grow this company to the next level so this is the short journey so far uh, i think uh, yeah and now and then and, and i look forward to your questions uh, so that i can i can answer uh, based on those questions i think i covered the most of the points i really wanted to uh, cover in this introduction yes uh, back to you thank you sir uh, i'm audible clearly because i'm having some issues uh, yeah you are audible audible So if there are any questions, now students please unmute yourself and ask, or else they are post your questions into the chat box. Yeah, somebody raised a hand. Uh, I think uh, please, please unmute and ask. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sir, I am the parent of Uba. Yes. Now, let us be constant, sir. Now, let us have a common background, sir. അപ്പം ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഗ്രോത്ത് ഞങ്ങളുടെ കരിയർ ഗ്രോത്തിന് വേണ്ടിട്ട് സാറിന് എന്തെങ്കിലും സജസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുമോ ഓക്കെ വെരി ഗുഡ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ രൂപ യു ആസ്ക്ഡ് ഇറ്റ് സർ ടോക്ക്ഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദി ടെക്നോളജി സർ ഐ മീൻ കൃഷ്ണൻ സർ ടോക്ക്ഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദി ടെക്നോളജി വെൻ ഹി ലുക്ഡ് ഇൻടു ദി അവർ വെബ്സൈറ്റ് ഹി സോ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ടെക്നോളജി ഇൻ അവർ വെബ്സൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ബട്ട് ഇഫ് യു ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് എനി ഇൻഡസ്ട്രി ദി ടെക്നോളജി ഈസ് എ built in factor i am sure now we are using technology to to communicate we are using google's technology to communicate there are a lot of other technologies underlying this so one thing i would advise uh, all of you is that uh, basically uh, learn the new technologies whatever you learn whether it is commerce e-commerce or whatever i mean i am not a I'm basically i'm an engineer so i don't know what exactly would be what you should do in in the commerce but uh, the technology is going to definitely influence all the businesses even the advanced form of technology like artificial intelligence and machine learning are going to influence us even in this software which we are currently using uh you see a background it is actually a virtual background which actually uses computer vision technology Uh, and to you might not be hearing the the background noise uh, near to my home that is also a, a technology so uh, 
uh, going forward with our technology it is uh, almost impossible to run businesses if you want to work in a company or even if you want to uh, run your business uh, technology is something uh, something inevitable so keep an eye on technology keep learning about the latest technologies along with your core subjects that would be one key advice and whatever you learn if you allow it learn deeper as much as possible and try to be the you know, one of the best probably i mean i mean when we started our company we were always telling our team uh, whatever we do we need to be world's best then only we can actually survive in this extremely competing world i mean it is easy to uh, do uh, substandard work but you can't actually survive for long so if you really want to be successful keep uh, keep the focus on this technology and to whatever you learn learn it at the best and uh, try to be the world's best thank you sir thank you ruba for asking let me ask uh, questions to uh, how many of you really want to uh, do business in this forum how many of you really want to be an entrepreneur is there anyone maybe you can say yes if if someone wants to then utilize please utilize this opportunity ask whatever questions is there any yes coming in you can type in you don't need i am not uh, going to ask further questions what business and all but you can type in if you really want to do a business vg yeah yeah vg yeah, yes prasad is by yeah yeah uh, so i had one question if i may yeah. but in the yes, meantime please. the students will be posting questions i hope uh, see uh, in indian indian car manufacturing sector uh, mm -hmm. though we are very late to adoption of technologies compared to foreign uh, car manufacturers but nowadays it has evolved over the years our our car manufacturing sector also has evolved are there any associations with indian uh, companies uh, for your for axia what yeah. are the plans uh, especially with a developing nation like ours there needs to be a um, there is going to be a huge market in terms of automobile sector even foreign cars are coming in unlike in the past so what are your plans for the indian market that is one secondly i also would like to know how what is the since we are commerce people so we probably look at the finance side of it um, are the associations with these companies or uh, what is the credit duration which they ask for what is the normal credit duration etc it will be good for us to learn. thank you good question yeah okay to answer to the first questions uh, we work with um, uh, yes indian uh, we are not actually focusing only on cars we are actually i would say any automobile including uh, two wheelers so we are working with an uh, indian electric uh, uh, electric scooter maker we are making the uh, some of the software for for the upcoming scooters so we are work and we have started working with mahindra uh, for quite a long ago uh we have built some of the applications which goes into the uh, fleet management software tracking and all which actually some part goes into the vehicle some part actually sits in the uh, server so uh, but uh from the technology side uh it may not be visible but uh, uh every cars on the road now has got a lot of technology uh, in that even a tata nano car has got tech, uh, electronics in that Uh, i mean uh, it has got a couple of microprocessors couple of microcontrollers which controls various functions so the cars has this has become electronics and software has become inevitable part in every automotive every uh, vehicle uh to talk about the statistics earlier it was zero the electronics was zero in the first generation cars but now it is the the Now the cost of each car is roughly i mean the cost of electronics plus software is more than 40% which is going up every year if you look at tesla if you are buying a tesla car you will be paying uh, 40% or 50% of the money just for electronics and software so that is how it is yeah coming to the second question it used to be um, uh, 60 days uh, but uh, post covid uh, now uh, situation is like 90 days uh, credit periods yeah okay yeah there is a question from vg uh, how do you build a successful customer base uh, 
uh, okay okay uh, um that's a very very interesting question excellent question uh, that is one of the toughest uh, uh, part in any any business having a, a successful customer base or quality customer base that is one of the toughest part i, I mean when i look back that was the biggest challenge even after starting our company we we started the company with a, a strong focus on automotive embedded software but we had to actually start with uh, some other customer but uh, that customer couldn't actually stay for long uh, so getting into the right customers probably need uh, a lot of patience uh, but at the same time you need to have certain value systems value systems uh, value systems linked with the quality of the deliverables uh, transparency in the business culture which all i mean if you look at um, the, the customers like mercedes benz or daimler daimler is the company in name daimler uh, is the 125 year old company they may, they actually um, created the first car in the world and they are still world's best leaders if you look at uh, some of the best companies in the world i'm not talking about the new generation companies i'm talking about the companies companies who stayed in the world for last 100 years at the top they all have certain core values strong core values so this this core whatever they do they will not compromise on these core values so to have this customer successful customer base ideally there should be a there should be a match with the value systems if you also if your business has got a strong value system which is aligned with the customer's value systems then the chances of uh, establishing a relationship with that particular customer would be much easier i mean even in a, in a smaller products when you buy probably you select certain brands so it is probably based on the value system of that particular company yeah that is uh, i would say that, that is one thing and definitely is the quality the quality and uh, the quality comes from uh, the strong deeper knowledge in the in the area you work yeah that is the answer to vg uh, to for the question yeah yeah there is a question from and the one was from entrepreneurial tricks have you tricks have you discovered to keep you focused and productive in your day to day busy schedule there is no tricks there is no shortcuts uh uh i mean there is uh, i don't know whether you call it as trick or uh, things as as um, krishna sir was mentioning in the introduction i keep learning i, uh, I if, if you look at my desk or my even my office desk you can see a lot of books so i keep keep learning continuously keep learning so that you are well updated about uh, the the industry the well updated about uh, the business models well updated about the business culture so uh, there is nothing called tricks as of now uh, it's it's all pure uh, straightforward ways uh, with the strong value systems and uh, keep on learning continuously learning that's the answer for me i had a question in whatsapp group uh, from from our own teacher as an entrepreneur uh-huh. whether you have thought for a diversification to another sector from beyond electronics uh, yeah yeah i mean i am uh, i have a extreme passion for electronics but uh, at uh, i i am also an i am also i have spent uh, most of my career as a software guy so i can well, i i can i would do business related to only these areas i mean electronics plus software i can't do any other businesses because uh, if if you i mean uh, some of my friends may be doing business in probably retail but i don't know that business but uh, whatever i do pro- it will be definitely in the in the software side but yes uh, in the software there are uh, diversifications in the plans uh we are currently working on with a us startup i mean uh, thanks to my uh, my uh, study at stanford which actually opened up a lot of opportunities uh, opened up a new network so we uh, with the help of a uh, few few of my uh, friends there we are setting up a new company i mean we have built another company and working on some products which is actually intended for students uh, students to Oh, pursue their 
uh, dream career or how to actually help them to achieve their dream career. We are working on something on that, which will be launched uh, mid of next year. Yeah. I saw it in your profile that uh, you represented India as a delegate to the 10th annual G20 Young Entrepreneurs Alliance. Uh, yeah. Uh, how was that experience and what is the kind of learning? When we go for such programs, what are the best learnings or what are the benefits of being of representing India? Yeah, um, that, that opportunity actually came through uh, Young Indians. Young Indians is an organization uh, which is actually representing India in Young Entrepreneurs Alliance. And every year, uh, the Young Entrepreneurs Alliance... Uh, before G20 summit, I mean, the, G, the real G20 summit, they conduct G20 Young Entrepreneurs uh, Alliance summit. That was in Japan. And the learning was like, uh, yes, you are able to meet uh, thousands of like-minded people from all these countries, all these 20 countries. So now I can say that uh, through that, by attending that three days uh, summit or three to four days summit, I got, I could actually establish a business network. I mean, friendship, I would say friendship with uh, people from all these countries, like-minded people who have actually st started their entrepreneurial journey in their country, in their ecosystems. So now if, if I need any help in any of these countries, whether it is Mexico or France or Russia or China or anywhere, in any of these G20, we have actually a common group I just need to raise a request and uh, someone will come forward and uh, uh, start helping. So that is one thing. Yeah. So uh, the learning is definitely uh, we, we get new ideas when we meet new, new people there. Uh, I mean, the entrepreneurial community is always uh, looking for new ideas, looking, uh, trying out new ideas. And those who have tried already, we can learn from them. That is the advantage there. Uh, there's one question. Pallavi, are you yeah. uh, going to ask it or the chat box? There is a question. These days, there are a lot many online courses on technology, software, etc. In your opinion, how effective it is? Uh, actually, I haven't actually uh, analyzed. Uh, I, I may not be able to give the best answer to that. Uh, that depends on your uh, passion, your interests. So... Uh, but evaluating uh, the, the course content, it's it's a very, very tough uh, uh, job. Everyone claims they are the best. Uh, so probably you will have to check with someone who has attended this course before. Or otherwise, you, you should actually uh, do a, I mean, try it out and find it out. I, I, I cannot uh, give a, because I am not the best expert to talk about that. Uh, I don't know which online courses are uh, you are referring to, Pallavi. I think uh, uh, I may not be able to help here. Uh, sorry. That's okay, sir. Uh, I was uh, thinking about like uh, there are a lot many courses. I'm doing courses uh, related to commerce. Uh, yeah. So I was doing so many courses like artificial intelligence courses, software development courses. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, got uh, it. So, uh, I thought, uh, will it be effective uh, than the regular classes, offline classes, or these online courses are more effective? Oh, okay, okay. In that aspect, ah, now I got it. Now the question is clear. Uh, I mean, whatever you uh, learn as per the, your course, you should continue to do that. But the online courses uh, definitely help. I mean, in 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 this, if you if you are doing now, you can do the online courses on Coursera platforms, which is almost free. Uh, but it may not be that effective as a, a live class, definitely, because in the live class you learn, you interact with the the faculty, you can you interact with your peers, you get a different experience. But uh, when it comes to these some of the specialized courses. Uh, run by certain world's best universities, you can definitely try it out online. I'm sure that will definitely add a lot of value. Pallavi, yeah, please continue to pursue that. Yeah, continue to pursue that, especially on uh, related to the commerce, or whatever comes. Uh, I mean, whether it is you talked about artificial intelligence and machine learning or data analytics, all those things. So data science, 
this is i think very much relevant i believe uh, when it comes to uh, your your uh, area i believe so uh, arati shija has raised her hand can you ask your question arati uh, okay sir good morning sir uh, sir nan uh, become second year student aanu uh, sir software maarunad enganeyanu padicha products il maatram varunnu parayamo nu ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് uh, how do you cope up with the evolving technology and how do you incorporate that into uh-huh. your product how do you okay 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 yeah adano arthi uh yes sir okay okay uh, i mean in the, especially in the software uh, in the tech- software technology side uh, yes the advancements are happening on a daily basis you are um, getting exposed to new technology on a daily basis so uh, but in, in our area for example if you look at uh, we are working in the, in the automotive embedded software so we can classify the software into certain categories i mean on board i mean on board in the sense the software which actually goes into the vehicle which uses a certain level of technologies which is pretty much stable only thing the power of electronics changes so and the software uh, whatever we write you might heard about c programming language or c++ programming language or java programming language these are the core programming languages we use but when it comes to the software goes into the servers or computers and uh, some data uh, progr- uh, data science we use uh, artificial intelligence so these are the new trends so there is something uh, which is something very uh, core at the, at the uh, uh, functions levels which which is i would say uh, don't change drastically but the uh, the, uh, the new features if you look at tesla's new generation cars which has got an autopilot autopilot means it is autonomous driving feature which has got computer vision um, computer vision is basically camera based uh, technique techno- techniques or camera based technology which actually detects objects on the road which is totally based on a new technology the technology existed in the past but uh, now it is feasible because of the availability of the high computing power so uh, to answer to your questions uh, most of uh, these advancements coming ideally from uh, usually comes from the academy uh, academy and when i talked about academy all these universities like mit or stanford they do a lot of research in these areas and uh, come up with certain product concepts which is actually picked by the industry so by the time the industry starts picking we also uh, get trained in those uh, at least we have a, a team looking into the new technologies continuously looking into the new technologies we, our that particular team's responsibility is to learn that technology a, uh, impart that knowledge to the entire team that's how we do in the within the company so for an individual you need to continuously learn that is the way i mean you need to define your goals you, your career path and based on that you need to continuously learn in that area the most important thing i would uh, recommend is if you are very serious about your career uh, you need to find a mentor uh mentor who has actually uh, traveled in your uh, in the in the same path early so you need to have a mentor that mentor will definitely be able to guide you uh, to take decisions wherever you need uh, support arde okay thank you sir uh, swati rajan uh, swati swati rajan are you there Okay. Priya 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 teacher excuse me sir sir i am priya son i am studying in class 9 sir i okay. yes, saw your session and i really enjoyed it my favorite subject is also electronics sir i wanted to ask you would you be expanding your industry and entrepreneurship to include automobiles and artificial intelligence in this sector 
we currently we currently work in the uh, artificial intelligence uh, side uh, i mean our company is, has got different focus areas uh, we have a focus area for the connected vehicle software we have a focus on e mobility i mean the electric car uh, related software and we also have something called uh, adas and autonomous driving which is purely based on artificial intelligence technologies our team has developed uh, driver alertness monitoring i mean for the new generation uh, cars uh, autonomous cars you need to monitor the driver i mean uh, the fully autonomous cars would take definitely a lot of time but uh, in between there are level 3 level 4 level level 5 is fully autonomous by the way so now the industry is working on level 3 and level 4 autonomous cars so these cars always needs to monitor the uh, driver uh to pass back the control whenever it is required i mean if the car is not able to take a decision it has to pass pass the control back to the driver so yeah, as part of that you need a driver alertness monitoring system within the cabin our team has developed uh, driver alertness monitoring which is actually uh, being now uh, evaluated by uh, the automotive companies okay yeah, yeah so we are already into that uh, artificial intelligence space yes okay sir thank, thank you, you thank sir. you omkar thank you for joining the program sir i really enjoyed this session thank you thank you omkar thank you swati are you there now yes sir uh, sir na swati na bcom yeah. first year student aanu mm-hmm. sir inde company engena aanu covid crisis ok manage cheyirathu okay very excellent question um yeah in the year 2020 we were at the peak uh, we had 200 uh, 250 engineers close to 250 engineers and uh, at that time the covid uh, crisis was hit and uh, our, and our customers were also in a very bad shape so some of the because it it created a lot of panic a lot of uh, uncertainties uh, auto industry was uh, yeah. auto industry. i think someone which eat by the diva Uh, Swati, you can you mute yourself? Swati, be nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and automotive industry was one of the uh, effect affected one, very badly affected. And uh, some of the orders got cancelled. Some of the uh, projects got cancelled, suspended, extended. Uh, we also had a lot of uh, challenges internally. I mean, to but uh, we took some decisions. I mean, we evaluate. I mean, my finance team, the whatever. Uh, i mean their expertise came in that uh, right time and they evaluated the situations and uh, we uh, decided not to fire anyone not to uh, terminate anyone we continued with the entire team uh, but uh, we also invited ideas from the team and many of them uh, came up with excellent ideas like uh, the ways to cut down the cost uh, ways to cut down the cost and even some some of the members voluntarily came forward and uh, uh, there is something called a concept called furlough i mean voluntarily taking leave for two months or three months without pay so uh, the, uh, the, I, i was even surprised to see such a, a very supportive uh, mindset from the team so uh, with all that we could actually cut down the cost but we continued to pursue uh, for looking for the new opportunities and with the excellent uh, excellent work we did in the past when the companies started uh, restarted their business uh, they 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 reached back to us and uh, uh, i th- i think it took around 6 to 7 months we had to go through a very tough period uh, because of these uncertainties but uh, soon after that now if you look at the growth is excellent and now we are actually a uh, positions to grow multifold maybe at least uh, two times or three times that's uh, why yeah thank you sir uh, yeah. we can have one more one last person uh, is there any other question which you would like to ask you can take one more um okay And yeah then- uh, same yeah okay uh transition from employee to entrepreneur but uh, i i uh, mentioned i was an uh, entrepreneur in the beginning and then became employee uh, let me talk about that first um, 
I mean, uh, immediately after the the college, I started my uh, venture and uh, uh, tried it for at least w- uh, run run it for two years, more than two years, and uh, then only I, ch- I changed to uh, employee mode. Uh, but that entrepreneurial mindset really helped me in the, in the as an employee. I mean, and when I now being an entrepreneur. I will definitely look for this entrepreneurial mindset in em- and employees. I mean, those who are ready to take up the challenges, those who are actually uh, take up more ownership in the, in the, in the work. Uh, so that was the big change. I mean, uh, running your own company and then becoming an employee, I was always, uh, I always looking for opportunities, looking for challenges, looking for, uh, innovation looking for ways to optimize looking for ways to increase the efficiency which actually helped me a lot to be a very successful employee i would say even uh, many times i i won the awards for the uh, for the best uh, employees and all and uh, yeah so i would say uh, the employer to employee transition Uh, really help but uh, even in, in employee part employee tenure uh, i was at at my heart i was an entrepreneur i mean it is something called entrepreneurship uh, you can uh, find it out the word entrepreneurship so i was always trying to trying to do uh, the the most innovative way so employee to ent- uh, entrepreneur uh, the, the biggest change i see at the moment the transformation is that you need to the responsibilities are much much bigger when it uh, become when you become an entrepreneur uh, probably people might say yes once you uh, own a business then things are easy it is not like that as i i mean even i mentioned about the the uh, down uh, i mean the downside journey of the uh, company we had to actually face and the crisis we had to face in between so the responsibilities are uh, plenty i mean you are responsible for the entire team you need to find ways to actually uh, feed them so you need to work probably probably work two times or three times uh, in as an entrepreneur uh, not maybe not always but uh, you i mean that is the change and uh, as an employee you will always uh, tend to focus on the uh, the area you uh, you you are responsible for but as an entrepreneur you are uh, responsible for the entire organization as a whole so you need to actually wear different hats i mean in the you need to wear uh, i mean we had a very humble beginning we i used to be the office boy i used to be the uh, driver uh, to pick my customer from the airport so i mean you need to wear a lot of uh, hats uh, as an entrepreneur but now yeah uh, fortunately now we have uh, every department uh, to take care of all those things yeah so if you have time we will uh, conclude with the last question which there was a poster the share about the r&d center where is it uh, i think basically where is your r&d center in india and also about the csr practices of your company uh, yeah uh, now our our complete development center is in trivandrum uh based out of uh, technopark uh, even though we have offices in germany japan sweden and all uh the development center is primarily in in, in trivandrum and uh, we uh the r and d team is also uh, within trivandrum uh to talk about our csr activities yes we do have a axia foundation trust something called axia foundation trust which actually uh, supporting various csr activities so they give um, it is actually driven by employees and we we i mean it's between axia and the employees uh, we we run this particular uh, csr fund uh, so every month they support various activities including the medical aid and uh, we give a lot of importance for the education of the underprivileged uh, uh, students especially in the, in the trivandrum district uh mainly in the tribal settlement areas and all uh, and we are supporting a few schools there um, and our employees uh, take the initiatives and uh, we i am i am also part of uh, many of such initiatives okay thank you uh, thank you very much sir can we go to the uh, formal concluding session and 
vote uh, of thanks session. Swati. Swati. Vote of, of thanks to Parayanai, third year BCom Vidyarthiniaya.